This is Overdrive with Hayes, Noodles, and the O-Dog on TSN 1050. All right, here we go, Overdrive, off and running, TSN 1050 on the TSN app, your home smart speaker, Brian Hayes, Zio Dog, Jeff O'Neill, Jamie Noodles McLennan. How we doing? How we feeling on a beautiful Tuesday? Feeling great. I'd like to let you guys know that I had a stop and chat at Walmart today, and Don and Mary Lou, uh, a distinguished couple, are massive fans, and Mary Lou is a massive fan of hazy b said he's a know-it-all but he really does know it all wow there you go so <laughs> that's a, a backhanded that knows com- it all that's, that's a great. backhanded compliment i isn't think it? it is yeah <laughs> well they're both just impressed how every sport you know it's just the guy knows his facts so shout out to donnie and mary lou donnie I'll and mary what. lou i love it those are old school handles and we love them and but uh, they also mentioned hazy that they would like you to be a little bit more engaged in public like i was with them today is that right okay oh, really? well if i ever come across don and mary lou i will make sure that i do that um yeah listen i think i'm quite engaging i've said this before i think there's a line between bothering people in terms yes. of you instigating the conversation, I'm talking yeah. about yeah, Jeff O'Neill, you. Brian yeah. Hayes, Jamie McLennan, yeah. uh, as opposed to people coming up and saying, hey, love the show. What do you think of this? Happy to engage. Always good for engagement. Always willing to get involved in that. Uh, always been the case. Always will be the case. There it is. A know it all. And I'm letting you know wow. that that's exactly how I operate. And I will continue <laughs> to. So shout oh. out to Donnie and Mary Lou. Thank you oh. for that. Oh, I want to report to you that that know-it-all. I got a head shake yesterday. I don't know if you. Oh, oh no! Did you? When, when was the head shake? I don't okay, recall. Okay, so I looked up and saw it, and I did. I started laughing to myself, but I, you were talking, and I, I've, I've had this. Tis cold, the like, season for the head shake. By it the is, way. but I've had a cold. Like I've had this chest cold for like a month. I've been on my mute button, like just hacking up lungs or whatever so we were we were having a good chat the three of us yesterday and for some reason you brought up something and you were talking and you threw it back to me and jonas and jonas was a um, mute yes, out of nowhere that was, and i was I on i was on my mute and i was choking and i i waited until i was done coughing and then i i started talking and i looked up in the back hall and i saw a head shake and i'm like he thinks we're not paying attention. And well, I swear uh, on my I, life, that, I'm I familiar was with attention. that head shake. I'm familiar <laughs> with that head shake because what happens is he'll toss something out there. And if there's daydreaming or something going yeah. on, he will go ball. It's okay, earned. Now I remember Sometimes this it's though. earned. Sometimes it's an earned head shake because if we're daydreaming, I get it. We deserve. But yesterday, I literally, and I was, a, when I answered, I was going to say, sorry, I was on mute. I was coughing up a lung. But literally, me and I was waiting for Joe, like, just give Jonas, jump in there. And okay, he let didn't. me answer this because okay. that was literally the start of the show. That's why it was literally, there we go, off and running. Like, how are you coughing 10 seconds in? Like, what do you want out of me? I start the show the same way every day. How are we feeling? And then you guys are both sitting there like garden gnomes staring at me. What do you want me to do, sit there and smile like an idiot? Jonas went baby monkey right off the hop. I love it. Yes, both of them just staring at me, doing nothing. I'm like, how am I supposed to know? Joe from the bridge, I need video evidence of this. It did drive me crazy. I will I, I, fully admit to that. It, I couldn't believe. Like, yeah. I get it. If we're in the show and there's things going on and you don't, you know, there's right, P's right. and Q's that come with broadcasting. Four o'clock, I expect you guys to be prepared. <laughs> I, I was I'm prepared. sorry if I'm asking too much. Yeah, I was seems prepared. like a lot. I think this was about halfway through the show. So no, that, it wasn't. No, I, it wasn't. I think this was where it might have... You might. I might have got a double head shake now I, that I think because I don't remember I the first one. one. Five hey, seconds in. Let's not that talk first. about. Let's not drown I love in the it, sorrows. Though. We'll get the life coach on Thursday, guys, and oh, we'll nice. do Dear Hazy B. We'll just positivity. Anybody wants to get in shape, weight loss, they're getting moose belts. We'll bring him in, and he'll help us out on Thursday. Okay. All positive. Love All it. positive. I'm excited. Love it. No, I, listen, I I, uh, I hear what you're saying, Noodles. I'm fighting through the same thing everyone seems know, to be right crazy. now. You got allergies? Was, what is it? No, I just uh, my kids have been sick. My wife's – we've all just – it's just a cold. I, I it think it's this time of year. Is, I, do, I don't know what it is, but I've had this cough. 
because I've had no other symptoms other than just it in my chest and phlegm and all of that. But it's been a month, and I'm like, all right, uncle, enough. Like, yeah, you just, it's really frustrating. I, but... The other day, I was joking because you know how Dregs sometimes has that, like, you know, whatever Dregs is choking on or whatever sometimes. And I, I, I was doing that yesterday, and I was trying to get back on, and I obviously was on mute because I didn't want to cough in everybody's ear. But it was just funny because I witnessed, I looked up and I saw a little head shake. And I'm like, yeah, oh, I got the listen, head I shake. Listen, I got to own those. I, I nope. don't recall I the one it, later though. in the show. I remember distinctly the start of the show. And maybe maybe JP can go get it. We can have an official review. Noodle, oh, you can tell us what you think about it. But I that in particular, I was like, what are we doing here? We're starting the same way we start every day and no one's talking. Well, like, am I on I, an island here? It, you know what it was too, usually? And I think I could own this too is usually you throw it out and O will start, and then I pop in. And right. You threw it out and Jonas was Jonas <laughs> just sat there. <laughs> like, like Jonas oh, was okay. really just sitting there, and yeah. it was kind it was of awesome. awkward. But it's all good. It's it's We're fine. We're back. Yeah, Blue Jays and, win last night. Yeah. So how about how I was – actually, I, I really appreciated the way John Schneider, you know, spoke openly after the game about how proud of his team he was. You're allowed to do that. You know, you don't have to be – Purpose for uh, the swear yeah. words. Like, I think people throw in the F-bombs when they want to get the point across. I don't know. They seem kind of, like, intentional. And I guess swear words always kind of are, but they, like, give some oomph. You know what I mean? Yes, for sure. But, he, you know, they were dealing – they got dealt a tough hand yesterday. There were a lot of guys sick, a lot of guys that weren't willing to play or couldn't play. Right. And, you know, Baltimore's the, the best team in baseball. You're, you're coming off a tough series against Minnesota – they had to grind, you know, and it's May 13th. It doesn't mean anything if you if you fold tonight. You know, that's the issue with this team. They had that great comeback on Saturday. It felt like possibly a TSN turning point, a galvanizing moment, and then they fold on Sunday and bring nothing to the table. So whatever happened last night can be a great moment if you carry it over to tonight. But why don't we play Schneider? Because, yeah. again, a lot of it, you know, baseball, it's a long season. His thing two weeks ago bothered a lot of people, myself included, where I'm just going to keep saying it. It's May and we're going to turn around. It's like, all right, John, like show something, show some emotion, so, show some honesty, you know, just just give us something more than just a Coles notes of what you think Ross and the crew want you I to say. I think he's deathly afraid or like which I think all younger managers are, Hayes, he's deathly afraid of saying we're garbage and we're, yes. we're garbage right now. You know what I mean? Yes. And I don't yeah. know if he's afraid of the veteran guys in the in the clubhouse, like losing them or what it is, but he, he'll never come out with that heat. Yeah, and that's, that's probably a reasonable uh, assessment, and I guess I can't necessarily blame him because he, these are the guys that gave him a, his big league start. You know, it was kind of like yeah. Sheldon Keefe. You know, Keith didn't have an NHL history. He didn't have two or three cup rings and been in the league for 30 years. Right. You know, it, you, you got to build that resume up. But here's what Schneider had to say about, about his team last night after a big win in Baltimore. Yeah, you don't want to say May 13th is a, is a huge game, but this was a huge f- win. Um, we had nine guys, and we obviously had no moves to make. So I couldn't be prouder of, uh, I don't know if that's a word, I couldn't be more proud of the guys that, that were out there tonight. Um, huge day from Bo, huge day from Varsh. I mean, Varsh hits a homer, robs a homer, drives in the winning run. Um, told him before the game, there's no secrets here, boys. You're not getting pinch hit for, you're not getting pinch run for. So, Vogie, Kirky, I hope, you, I hope you're feeling fast. Um, but, yeah, it's, it's May 13th, but that's a huge win. Yeah. Yeah, there were some gratuitous swear words that puts it over the top. Yeah. For sure. But It's uh, like I got to just add this one to show the boys I mean I like business. It. That's I a like Lou it. Brown type of comment, right? Yeah, like, it was. It's it's us against them type of mentality in there. They 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 must be feeling it. They know they're in trouble. Um they're behind the eight ball. It's not going to get easier tonight. You got Baltimore again tonight. Um, but Steve Phillips will join us a little bit later in the hour, and we'll look ahead to the game tonight, but also look back on how significant that was. We'll play that clip for him, get his take on what Schneider was saying. Um, we got Darren Dreger coming up. I guess Craig Berube is making his tour around vacancies in the NHL. I guess he's in Winnipeg today, and there's a lot of vacancies. I mean, you, yeah. you look throughout the league between Toronto, Winnipeg, Seattle, San Jose, New Jersey, and L.A. L.A. is still technically a vacancy right like they haven't I, I every they team in hiller, the league is a vacancy did they give hiller the job i, I okay. thought i read so sorry i thought i read the other day hiller got the 
the stamp of approval to be full time. Okay. Let's let's ch- let's research that and make sure I'm not wrong on that. But okay. I thought he got the interim removed hey, the other it's day. It's four o'clock. We should know that. By yeah, now. that is a know it all type of comment that I should know, and I don't. <laughs> but I, I thought he was still the interim. But well, Al, Al's brother's running the operation. He will wow. be on that. Um, but yeah, you know, Barube. I think it's in your best interest if you're a if you're a sought after coach to to talk to teams and you know you look at let's take LA out of it Toronto Winnipeg Seattle San Jose Jersey I'm curious how you guys would rank like if you could choose any of those teams they all wanted you they're all willing to pay you the same amount of money hypothetically speaking they'll all give you the same money the same term you get to pick who would you choose I got an answer for you can you just name the teams quickly again yeah Toronto Winnipeg Seattle San Jose New Jersey well, other than Winnipeg, it's going to be who's going to get the best goalie. That's what I'm going to do. Mm-hmm. That's what I'd say to the GM. Who are you going to get in that? Because I'm not coming there if it's some if it's some guy of the ilk that we've seen teams flopping. And Noodles, I know you were on me a bit during the year, but I just I, I can't believe some of these teams. And Carolina, Freddie Anderson's rebounded, but to put all your eggs in, in some of the the baskets of the hey. L.A.'s, Toronto's, it's, like, very costly, man. And these teams want to go get this other thing, this this 20-goal score from two years ago or whatever, and nobody wants to just – some of the all, – all the teams, there's a bunch of transactions where it's like you could have got a goalie for that, and they don't do it, and it's crazy, and they're pissing away years of McDavid and Dowdy and Kopitar and all the – Matthews and all these guys with goaltending, yeah. and it's crazy. So I would say to the GM, I want to know who you're in net before I think about stepping foot on an airplane to come to this city. I, I would say my lead – like, Winnipeg obviously has the best goalie, and, and the team is really strong. But for some reason, what pops off the board for me is Jersey. I think Jersey, if they got healthy, like you get a uh, Dougie top 50 in there. Who's and- in that? Who's in that? Well, that's my question, but that's, that's what I was why just, I think the answer is Winnipeg. I think you make a great Winnipeg. point, Oh, You make a great point because the goaltender, it, it makes the, t- the coach, I mean, you know, tied together for yeah. sure. But, uh, you know, I would say Winnipeg would be one then, yes, with the goalie. And then – Hellebuck's clearly the best. Now, his playoff performances, I know we disagree on that, but Thinner, it, would, yeah. it would scare me a little bit the way he's played the last couple of years. But – the other, like Toronto, doesn't have one. They have Joseph Wall in a vacancy. Seattle, yeah. I, I don't know. If it's you could... like Grubauer, Decor, like, but yeah. I don't know where that's going to go. But Decor's a good young goalie, but he like is. they're, yeah, but you're right. Like they're not a rock star. They're not a rock star tandem. Like that's mm-hmm. not all Mark and Swayman type of thing. Right, but, but San Jose is not in the conversation right now. And Jersey, that's a rebuild. they're yeah. not really either. I guess they have Jake Allen now. Um, I, I would be shocked if Jersey doesn't go and get a goalie, yeah. even though they got Jake Allen. So you're right. I think that's a great question, though. Like, who's stopping pucks? Like, that might be when, when, you're, when you're being interviewed is, who's stopping pucks for me? Because if it is going to be, you know, they've got two young goaltenders in New Jersey, but neither one of them seem to push through as, as no. NHL ready right and now. And noodles, they, ha- they have to have somebody ready. Because I think Jack Hughes and company, they want to push through. That's something that yeah. they have ambitions to do. And if they get that goaltending, they're simply not doing it. So, so New Jersey's going to try the great young players, but it's like, are we going to go through another year of pulling a guy after a period and then going through that guy and then just, just you're just I, pissing, you're pissing away good years. So what if Tommy Fitz goes, I want to hire you, but I'm also trading for Markstrom slash Soros that type where do of I sign? Deal. Where do I sign? But, but I, what if the Leafs say that? I was just going to say, where do I sign? What if Toronto does that okay, too? Okay, well, let's say they both say, let's say Soros goes to Jersey and Markstrom comes to Toronto. Who's who's better, Toronto or Jersey if you're Barube? I would def- – uh, I'd say if Toronto. I, They've made the playoffs. You're, you're like, right. Jersey doesn't Toronto, make like, – you know, but, everyone talks about hype. They had one great year. Other than that, they've, they've done nothing. I'll treat it like years. any quiz question when it's about a player – or any answer about this or that, I always will defer to the best player, and I'll I'll hitch my wagon to Austin Matthews, thinking yeah. that one of these years he's going to drag his team right to the finish line. Whether that happens or not, I don't know, but I would sure be optimistic about the idea of that. My, I'd be my, enticed by that, let's say. Agreed. Your best player, you know, oh. wins on this, but I would say, where's the organize? Like, what are you doing? 
Like, what are you doing with the core four? What are you like? That's the second question. Who's stopping pucks is number one. What are you doing? Because if this organization has to take a step backwards in the last year of Tavares's deal and all, you know, dealing with Marner and all that, it might be a year out before you can really clean clean house and 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 do what you want to execute. Mm-hmm. So you you might be looking at the short term and the long term as to what does this look like? What does this team look like a year from now? Like that that might be. I a, think that's a, legit a legitimate question. question that I'm not sure it's come up enough because. Um, you know, I think the Leafs, they clearly, they believe they'll make the playoffs next year. They they probably will, but there's going to be a lot that happens between now and opening night next year before anyone can make that projection. But they, it may be a year where they have to, to reel back. You know, it might be a year where they've got to play out some contracts and accumulate cap space and accumulate assets. And that may not even be in their best interest. You know, again, I, I've said it countless times. It sucks that they didn't win anything, but they're in it. The window's closed, and they're in a transition period. It happened. I, I keep referencing Pittsburgh, but it happened with Pittsburgh. They had to wait seven years or whatever it was until they got back. You know, the Leafs they gave a run. They went at it for five or six years. It didn't work. They might need a year or two to kind of refocus things and bring Cowan in and bring Minton in and find other young players and move pieces in and out. It may not be as simple as they're going to do it all in one summer could, and everything's ready for next year. Could, and the goaltender is probably the best example of that. They might not find the guy. They, they might not find him. It, it, it may be, you know, a, a backup with Joseph Wall, and they're like, we're going to see what happens this year, you know, because yeah. they couldn't find the right goalie or they couldn't pay the price or they didn't have the prices that other teams were looking for. Like well, it's not just magically going to fall into their lap. It could be tough. I've I've always envisioned, do you remember when San Jose was that, it seemed like San Jose, we picked them to win every year. They were like, you know, just conference fight. Like they were a a really good team. Thornton, Marlowe, Couture, Pavelski, but they never won. They never got over the hump. They were the sexy pick every year. They they were, but I feel like the Leafs are kind of like, Kind of like that of the East. Like they've, they've been there. They're kind of kicking around. Now they haven't won playoff rounds. San Jose has. But outside of that, like I always felt like what if you look at the template, what did San Jose do? Like did they take a giant step back or did they try and continue to retool? I know they changed captaincies. That's the, hmm. you know, that's the one thing up, up front that. But that's I look at it. Maybe San Jose is the template, even though San Jose retooled and didn't push through. They didn't right? end up winning. That's the thing. Right? They did get to a cup final uh, at some point, but th- that was yeah. that was the end of the road. Um, but yeah, I mean, you, you, you wonder about coaches looking at their goaltending situation. I, I'm wondering if when Chris Knobloch got the job in Edmonton, if he said, is there a chance Calvin Pickard's going to start a must win game for us? He is starting. Point. Yeah. Pickard, he's is, starting. Pickard yeah. is starting for the Oilers tonight. And I think it's the, I, I thought about it. Yeah, Mike Kelly sent out a, I don't know if you saw that tweet from Mike Kelly from sport logic. Did you see it? I don't know if Al's brother can pull it up. It's an unbelievable stat as to Stuart Skinner's body of work in the last two playoffs. In, in, in it's goal saved above expectations, so it's a little bit of, you know, some numbers involved. But he's had four games in the last two years that where he stopped in a positive goal sa- saved above expectation. The rest of the games are below. And some of the games are like three and a half goals he should have stopped type of Let's thing. Let's just simplify that one. It's not even close to being good enough. Well, that's – that's so I think what the thought process is, we know what Skinner's been giving us. Let's see what Pickard – if Pickard can give them nine, 900, 9 out of 10, I think Edmonton can win games. Mm-hmm. But that's, that's what you're looking at. And I – you know, Skinner's 25 years old. He's actually the same age as Joseph Wall. They'll both be 26 next year. The difference is, is – you know, Wolves only played like 30-some games. Skinner's played like 130 games. Like, th- neither one of them punched through, but Skinner's the guy. They put all the eggs in his basket yep. and sent Campbell to the minors. He hasn't done the job. So it is, I think uh, it, it is a must win, and they need a game from Pickard, yeah. and they need everyone to play better in front of him, too. Yeah, it's – it's uh, I don't even know if it's a courageous play because we've been watching Skinner. He just yeah, can't like what stop a position pucks. for Pickard, Hayes. Like, yeah. this guy's been noodles. You could call him a career backup at, at, at best, yeah. right, in the National Hockey League. He's been a yeah. minor league. Like, 
And now he's supposed to save the day for Connor McDavid and the Edmonton Oilers. Right. That's preposterous. Well, it is because it's not just one game. I mean, let's like at some point you're right, Noodles. I'll give you nine out of ten, nine hundred hockey. I think maybe that gets it done tonight, maybe game five. It's not gonna do that against Dallas and Florida in a cup final. Like that right. if that's who they're playing or the Rangers or whatever, no way. I mean, Ed- Edmonton's good. They're not that good. They're, I, I they're not think... like miles ahead of every other team where they can survive with just okay goaltending. They're going to need a guy that steals games. Yeah, and and that's where I think they're looking at the guy at the other end who's a third right now, their third string goalie, 23, yeah. going, that guy's giving us saves. I think what they're doing is thinking short term. We need one game, and then we'll readjust next game. Like I, That's kind of what that's what I Do you think Skinner could go thinking. back in if Pickard wins tonight? I don't think he, he would go back that. in. But I, I think if they end up getting through or going, he, you're going to need him again. Like, I don't think it's like the end of the line. That's it. Pack up your stuff. Go home. Like, I think it's we need one game and you haven't been getting it done. Next guy up. That's mm-hmm. what really it has to be. Don't you yeah, think? No, it's uh, they're just I worried see. about tonight. They got to get through. Exactly. Tonight. They, they they win can't win go down tonight. three yeah. one. You got to yeah, win gotta tonight. Win. And, yeah. you know, I look at I feel bad for Colorado. That Nutrushkin just jam them up. Because they looked like they were sleepwalking last night. And I know that Nutrishkin's got problems. I feel bad for the guy. But, he, you know, Jack Johnson didn't feel bad for him. Do you see his comments yeah, last night? Yeah, they were pretty blunt. You know, he made, yeah. the, he made his decisions, and so be right. it. And if you're not familiar, Val- Valerie Nutrishkin is now in stage three of the NHL and PA pl- player program. So he's suspended for six months. Without yeah. pay. Without pay. And he's leading the playoffs in goals. He's Nine been unbelievable. Goals. Unbelievable. Um, but yet, you know, they were down two one in the series with them. Like that's yeah. the thing. If you're Dallas, like I, I do think that that factored in likely last night, and he's been great. But I think I'm not buying that Colorado now is just going to bow out because Nachushkin's not there. No. I think Dallas deserves credit. They they went in and spanked them two straight games. I, I read this stat this morning. Kale McCarr in his last three games have av- has averaged just under 27 minutes, zero points, minus six. Nathan McKinnon, 23 and a half minutes per game, one assist, minus six. Yeah. Miko Rannanen, one goal, 23 and a half minutes, one goal, and minus five in his last three games. So that's that's your three big boys, and they look like they were sleepwalking last night. Like yeah. Dallas, Dallas deserves four credit. Your stat packs today, Noodles, are I know. on Noodles point. Noodles on fire right now with the Fire, stats. and you've started the show on fire, and you deserve all the props you're going to get. I, one guy that's emerging as a bona fide stud in the league is 53 white Wyatt Johnston, Wyatt Johnston. that yes. guy that guy just looked like a good young kind of skinny 19 20 year old he's a flat out stud right now and who's ever doing a mock list for team Canada you might want to put that guy on it because he's that good well he's a stud you know what he's doing and what he reminds me of is it's Braden Point Yes, like that's that's what he's yeah. doing. He's doing yes. what Braden Point did three years ago. Where yeah, that guy's taking a job right now on somebody for Team Canada right now. Uh, yeah. I'm telling you, he's that good. He is. Well, that Stan Coven kid may be there too. Oh, like he might be there yeah. at 26. Like that that kid. He, he's look at the minutes he's, he's tiny playing. Too, eh? Tiny too. A tiny little five guy. foot seven, five yeah. foot eight. They and said, watching yeah. him at the World Juniors twice, I'm like, man, that guy's an engine out there. He's an engine, but. For some reason, I don't know what bias it is, but I always say to myself, I wonder if that'll translate in the National Hockey League. I just wonder. I wonder what it'll look like. Yeah. But he's doing it. He's as doing soon it. as he came up, it was just instant success. So good for him. Yeah, Whether he can translate that into that, what you just said, Hayes, there might be a spot for him. That's a that stretch. is a preposterous comment. Yeah. Uh, listen, that, it, it's a stretch right now. I understand that. But it, it, 26 is two years away. Yeah. And, yeah you never know what he's going to look like in two years. But that Wyatt Johnston, make a red and white and black jersey with 53 on it because he's on the club. Well, they got wow. both of them with back-to-back picks in the 01, in the 21 draft. Let me guess the second round. Uh, Johnston was in the first round, 23rd overall. So anyone making excuses, wow, you know, don't have a top five pick, can't find yeah. anybody. 23rd overall, and Wyatt that guy's the Johnston. best player in the playoffs right now. Yeah, and Logan Stankoven went 47th. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I mean. Jim that, Nail's that's... done a great job there, quietly. Oh, you drafting know, like has just... been phenomenal. Like what? Again, you look at it, they, they have a great blend of guys like Pavelski and Duchesne and obviously Sagan came from ben. somewhere else. He's been there for a long time. Ben's been a long time star. 
Um, but then you you have the Robertsons and the and Rupe Hintz who got hurt. That could be substantial. But Johnston and Stan Coven and Heiskinen and Ottinger, they're all picks. It's all yeah. a combination, Hayes. You see it every year. You have to have the right combination of your draft picks turning into good players and doing what they're doing, mm-hmm. i.e. Ottinger, Johnston, the trades, free agency, deadline day. It's all got to hit for, Like if you're going to do it right, and it's going to work like that. And let's yep. not award Dallas Stars the cup right now. No. But – the way that operation has worked, it's like that. That's that's the way. Like it's all worked. You go and get a Pavelski. You brought in Sagan. Ben's always been there. The young kids, they've they've panned out. Like it's just, it's one of those Jake things. Where, yeah, well, that that's what helps. You have a number one, and you got Heiskin in the number one defenseman. Yeah. You know they, they've they've done it they've done it well down there. And DeBoer's a good coach. They're doing yeah. it right. They're doing it right. They right, they Steve. looked at they, sorry they they looked like the best team out west. Yeah, they, they do, do right now. They yeah. do for sure. I mean they 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 look stable. Like they're up three one on Colorado. I think the I think Edmonton's going to win tonight. I feel like that's going to go seven. It'll be a battle, and Dallas is probably going to be sitting there waiting for them. You know we'll, we'll see what Colorado's made of. I, maybe yeah. they do what Carolina did last night. That was mighty impressive. Awesome. In the third. awesome. Really, really impressive by Carolina. Um, but yeah, Darren Dreger coming up just after five o'clock. We've got Jesse Marsh on the show, the new head coach of the Canadian men's national team, the soccer team. So he'll join us in a couple of hours. And Steve Phillips coming up on the Jays win last night, which Snyder said post game, and uh, a number of things Jays related moving forward. Overdrive continues. TSN 1050 and on the TSN app. Back to Overdrive with Hayes, Noodles, and the O-Dog. I need you to hold on. Heaven is a place not too far away. Overdrive continues brought to you by FanDuel, bringing you everything from the opening line to the final score. A couple games in the Stanley Cup playoffs tonight. The NBA playoffs. You see LeBron with his bottle of red courtside last night. It's embarrassing. Opus one. It's embarrassing. Like, I get it. You're, you're who you are, but... Do you need to ask somebody to bring you a bottle of Opus One to put <laughs> underneath your butt cheeks while you watch a game? Yeah. That's Opus a, One. Yeah, it's a hero move, though. It, it, it is. is. It's, it's got like the this. cork on it. Yeah. Like, what's the? what do you need that for? What Why? Yeah. Can't you have a cold beer it? and a glass? Honestly, I don't care how I famous you are. Have a cold beer and a glass. Yeah. Now, I don't think you're allowed to have glass at sporting events. Well, but... in a plastic cup. Like, just put a beer hey, or a vodka Guys, in, in saying that? Cup. In saying that, if we could get away with something like that, we would probably do it too. So I, I almost say I salute it. This guy's yes. so big. He's so powerful. He's so much bigger than the game. Right. And you're sitting courtside, and if somebody's going to bring you your favorite drink and you could get away with it, you'd probably do it. Yeah. So screw it. Say, so give me a bottle, know. leave the cork in, and scram. Yeah. And that's what LeBron did last night. Uh, here's Steve Phillips, our TSN MLB <laughs> analyst. Still a hero move. I yeah, okay, it. you think it's a hero move. I got you. <laughs> what do you think of that, Steve? You have any, uh, like if Mike Piazza showed up at City Field and said, I want a bottle of red behind home plate, you think yeah, you could I pull that off? I, I, I got to tell you, I think it's push to yeah. show up at other teams' playoff games when you're a star on another team. Like, it's just like, dude, like, either watch it from home or get in a sweep, but what are you doing? Like, like you wanted the attention to be in courtside for me, so I don't know. I'm down on that, uh, and I think it is sort of a showboat move, pulling out the Opus One uh, and and sipping it on the on the sideline there. So I, I didn't. Uh, I'm not in favor of that at all. Steve, like, when you were like, uh, you when you when you were running the Mets, <laughs> did, did it ever come across your desk that some celeb wanted to be in attendance and wanted some special treatment? Or was that strictly somebody uh, that would never come across your plate? Uh, it wouldn't come across my plate. But, I mean, listen, if they wanted the green M&Ms in the green room or they wanted the Avion water, Mariah Carey and all the stuff she wants, I mean, I, I would – it's fine. But just don't be sitting, you know, front and center like a star from another team. It would be like, uh, like Aaron Judge – going to a Dodgers Braves game and watching the game, wouldn't it seem like, like, what the hell are you doing there? Like, you lost, you're not in, just go home. What are you watching everybody else playing for other than to get attention for yourself? So I don't know. I, I just think it's a, sort of an attention-grabbing move, uh, and it made them look smaller to me, not bigger. Yeah, like courtside in particular too, right? Like we, we've seen – I was down at a Leaf playoff game recently. I saw a couple former Leafs, but they were in the suites. 
They were they were behind the scenes. Yeah. They weren't yeah. sitting behind the goalie, you know, or behind the bench. <laughs> it, it it is pretty wild. Like courtside is is pretty significant in terms of a profile play, and, and that was LeBron last night. But while that was ongoing, um, the Jays, you know, were winning a big game. And John Schneider, I want to play this audio for you post game. There were a lot of guys sick. The lineup, you know, it was a mashed up lineup card. They're coming off a series loss against Minnesota. They've lost basically every series for a month and a half. Uh, and they got a big win in extras last night. Here's what John Schneider had to say about it. Yeah, you don't want to say May 13th is a, is a huge game, but this was a huge um, we had nine guys, and we obviously had no moves to make. So I couldn't be prouder of, uh, I don't know if that's a word, I couldn't be more proud of the guys that, that were out there tonight. Um, huge day from Bo, huge day from Varsh. I mean, Varsh hits a homer, robs a homer, drives in the winning run. Um, told him before the game, there's no secrets here, boys. You're not getting pinch hit for, you're not getting pinch run for. So, Vogie, Kirky, I hope, you, I hope you're feeling fast. Um, but, yeah, it's, it's May 13th, but that's a huge win. What do you make of those comments? Uh, I mean, listen, I, as a manager, I think everything is an opportunity to manage. Uh, and he's not saying that for us. He's saying that for his guys, which I, you know, look, I respect. He's trying to manage the situation. Uh, and it was a tough situation. I mean, they are the Flu Jays right now. Uh, and uh, they've got a lot of guys that aren't feeling well. And, and for, so from that perspective, it was a gutsy win. But. Don't give it back now, right? So now, you know, it's like the Mets on Sunday had a great walk-off win, and then they got walked off last night, so it's a net zero. Like, it doesn't mean anything. Like, it's got to be some sort of a momentum builder. Uh, we know that they've got some good character guys on this team. We know they've got some tough guys on this team. They need to, to put a run together, and so it was a good win. Uh, and I get that he's sending that message to his team in a way, but – for the rest of us, great. What have you done for me lately? What are you going to do next? What are you going to do today? Because it really is only about today now at this stage. Steve, there's a classic scene, or part of the movie in Major League, where there's like three fans in the outfield, and the whole movie they're like, these guys bleep and stink. They bleep and stink. And then at the end they're like, maybe these guys aren't that bleep and bad. Do you think, Jay, like, did, could, does this team ever turn a corner where Jay's fans are doing that, where they're like, Maybe this is something, and maybe this can go somewhere, or this is going to be up and down, up and down, win one, lose two, win two, blah, 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 the whole year. Yeah, you know, they never seemed to get traction last never. year to get that real hot streak, right? They never. So they did the back and forth last year. They have the ability uh, to, to get on a run because they do have good starting pitching. And so if the offense picked up, they could go on a 10-game winning streak. But I do think that in the end – that might be more of a, a gut punch than the way that they did it last year where it was back and forth, back and forth, because they're going to build some hope at some point that they're going to make a run. But it's going to be really hard to sustain without the consistent offensive performance uh, that, that I just don't know is in that clubhouse right now. And so, I mean, can it happen? It can. Uh, but I just I don't see the ability for this team to all of a sudden get consistent offensively when they, we've got a sample size that's growing now with every game that goes by, that we've got all of last year and, and then, you know, a couple months into this season that are telling us really who they are at this stage of their career. Uh, and so it can change, but it's uncommon for it to change that dramatically. Well, there were certain things that we knew would turn around to an extent, Bichette being one of them. You, you know, you mentioned he had a great game last night. Schneider pointed to that. He's got hits in five straight. Uh, you know, we're, we're 13 days through May, but Vladdy's got an OPS up over 1,000 in those games played this month. I think the belief was that those two would, would certainly turn it around. I mean, Bo's still got an OPS under 600. There, if he's healthy, there's no way that's going to happen by the end of the year. Um, but there were other players where I, I wasn't certain if maybe a good start would continue, a poor start would continue. Dalton Varsho in particular, he took so much heat last year because of the way he performed, but also what happened with the guys that went to Arizona, then the Diamondbacks end up in a World Series. It was just a, a perfect storm of negativity. But he's been great this year, and he was great last night, and he's playing center field. Um, it, w at what point do we get to a scenario with, with the Varsho deal where maybe we, 
We get back to it being a coin flip, it leaning towards being pro Jays. Is that possible if this continues with Varsho? Yeah, I mean, listen, Gabby Moreno hit uh, his first home run of the season yesterday. Uh, after hitting seven last year for the postseason, uh, Lourdes Goriel is hitting like 235 right now. And so those two guys aren't really, you know, he signed back as a free agent. So, uh, and they're not playing great with Arizona, but they did get to a World Series. And so, um, but I think for Varsho, look, he's such a good kid, man. Like he cares and, and be, he almost cares so much uh, that when he's letting people down, he feels it. And he, he wears the burden of the struggles on his shirt sleeve. But yet when you're that guy, and I was sort of that guy as a player, when you get hot, you start to believe in yourself again, and you can get on a hot streak. And so I think that in the end, there will be an, you know, I don't know if it ever works out as a win for the Jays with that trade, because I think Moreno is going to have a long, solid career in Arizona. Uh, but it will be a trade where people will look at it and say, I understand it now, why they got Bar Show. It wasn't quite the best deal, but he is a good player. Uh, and, and so they may not win the trade, but I think Bar Show will win the appreciation of a fan base uh, before his time in Toronto expires. Yeah, I mean, big nights like last night go a long way, you know, because, the right. like, you know, him, he supplies a home run, he factors into the game-winning run. And, you know, ripping away a home run over center field, there's not much like it, is there, Steve? Like watching highlights like no, that and plays I, like that, it doesn't I get mean, much better. I mean, yeah, I, I think I heard like in the last uh, 20 years, there's two guys, Brandon Marsh and Varsho, that have hit a home run or robbed a home run in the same game. Wow. Uh, and, uh, you know, and so he did that. And, and, I mean, that was a remarkable catch. I it mean, was unbelievable. He went a long ways to go get it. Yeah, long ways to go get it. The timing of his leap was perfect. Uh, and, you know, we saw, you know, Jung Hoo Lee, the center fielder for the Giants, try to make a play at the wall, dislocate his shoulder, uh, and, uh, and he's going to be out for, for weeks now for the Giants. And so Varsho going to the wall, handled it perfectly, set up his body the right way. Uh, and, you know, here's a guy that was a catcher and an outfielder for his years in Arizona, obviously just an outfielder for the, the, the Jays, but – uh, you know, he's really is a solid athlete and a guy who really cares a lot about the team, his teammates, and, and trying to win games. Well, he certainly showed that last night. Uh, and as you've said, as we've said, I mean, it's meaningless if they go out and, you know, play hopelessly tonight and the offense doesn't show up and they don't pitch and they don't defend and they just end up throwing the series away. But you get one tonight, at a minimum, you're leaving Baltimore with a series win. That's going to go a long way. Um, we'll see what what happens down there enjoy the games tonight steve we'll do it again soon all right terrific guys thanks for having me appreciate it steve phillips our tsn mlb analyst uh we're up on tsn2 right now and the, the rest of the channels on the network they've got canada austria canada was up 6-1 it's 6-6 now what Harden, austria me? has scored five goals in the third period they they did what london did last night i know Oshawa. london was yeah london was down like what was it six, down one? six one and they, they won, won seven, seven six in double ot crazy. crazy what about easton cowan in 26 ah that's interesting <laughs> i like what Noodles you're thinking head's yeah. gonna pop right Stan on Cove and, and, and easton cowan on the fourth line why not a little energy line well, well listen, the kid has to play. I mean, he's he looks like he's going to be a great player. Yeah, but he's let's well. let's you know, junior numbers don't not don't always translate. Yep. Brad Rubichuk scored sixty four goals in the Western Hockey League on Lethbridge Hurricanes. Remember that name? I don't oh, remember I, that. Noodles. Name. I used to like. I felt old when I'd see guys come up and I'd be like. What round are you picking? Like, is that, I didn't know anything. I literally yeah. knew nothing about who we draft. I didn't even know when the draft was. I'd be like, what round did you go in? It's like first round or like seventh overall. And I'm like, oh, you, this guy's going to be off. Never play a game. Like, they yeah, just, I, it's, it's so weird how some guys just don't do it. But some guys, I mean, listen, Cowan looks like he's going to be a really good player. Like, there's, yeah. you know, and he's in a good program there. I tease about London, but that's a good program. Like, oh, they, yeah. you know, they, they, they know win what to for do a reason. They, they exactly. They, they, but, you know, I, I, it just, not everybody's game translates, you know, from junior. I played with Travis Green. He was a 60 goal scorer in Spokane. He ended up, what, third line center? Really good two way player. Like, not yeah. everybody, not everything translates to the NHL. Well, the it's, way it's, it's, always, to. it's always about who can adapt, right? Because right. if your goal scoring doesn't 
transfer to the next level, you got to figure out a way to stick around. You got to figure yep. out how to check. You got to figure out a way to kill penalties. If you think you're just continually getting screwed and you're not put in positions to score like you did in junior, you will never survive. Exactly. Bang on. Like you, the league sorts you out, and there's only a, a certain amount of top six players. But if yeah. you're a really good player, a highly skilled guy, and you don't play top six just based on the depth chart or opportunity, you better figure out how to play on that third line, mm-hmm. that, you know, and, and, and check and be a two-way player. That was the one thing Travis Green was able to adapt because he was like a 160-point guy type of thing in junior. Now, that was back in the Western League where everybody had 100 points. But, you know, it, it, no, this Cowan looks like a nice player. He looks like he's yeah. going to be good. It's funny. Like, scouting, that's what makes scouting so tough. Because yeah. you'll you'll see, like in junior, you'll see a kid with 120 points drop to the fifth round, and a kid with 64 points go fourth overall. Right. And yeah. you're, like, you're projecting that. five years away. And that's what it is. It's like, well, the kid that had 64 points, he's six three two ten and can skate. He's just figuring it out, and we think he will, and we think right. it'll translate. Well, how, come any, how come nobody projected Wyatt Johnston to be better than he is? Listen, that's not 20, a 26 overall 23rd overall. overall that's still I, a pretty I, I agree good with you, but yeah. y- you know how it is. Like the, Once you get out of the top 10, you know, at that point, yeah. there's how much difference is there from the 11th pick to the 31st pick? You know, it just It's in the eye of the beholder. One scout sees something. You know, At least he went in the first round. There are great players that went you know, in the third round, fifth round, seventh yeah. round, undrafted. You know, yeah. like... Braden Point. Well, yeah, was he a Point third rounder, right? Third round, absolutely. Kucherov's yeah. maybe going to win the heart again, and he went in the second round. So yeah. that's just the nature of it. But, yeah, it's a wild scene over in Prague right now. Mike Johnson calling a game. Johnny will join us at, at 6.05. Uh, the PGA Tour is uh, making a stop at the PGA Championship. I guess Liv is there too, right? And we had some yeah. big news coming out of the golf world today. We'll, we'll get into that as well. Darren Dreger still to come and confirm and deny at 5.30. Overdrive continues. TSN 1050 now up on TSN 2. Now, back to Overdrive with Hayes, Noodles, and the O Dog. All right, so Canada was up 6 1 on Austria at the Worlds, and Austria scored five goals in the third period to tie it up. It goes to overtime, and guess who scores the OT winner? Captain Toronto. John Tavares. Yeah, and I believe on a feed from Pierre-Luc Dubois. Wow. So everyone is having a great time over there. Yeah, everyone's having a lot of fun. As Brian what you're saying? would say, or sorry, should I say Figgy, mm-hmm. what a wild scene. What a wild scene. What a wild scene. Does anyone scene. else call you Figgy? Uh, you got to explain that. If I yeah. think I know why you're saying that, but I... I was would... brought to my attention today that your middle name is Figgins. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I have two middle names. That's my mom's wow. maiden name. Yes, absolutely. Oh. That's why. That's cool. It's my, yeah, Brian William Figgins Hayes. That's my complete Oh, okay, because my name's Jeffrey Paul Flanagan O'Neill. Flanagan okay. being my mom's. I thought it was like Figgy, like you were after some, like. <laughs> what would that so, I don't know, man. Yeah, it's Figgy literally the same as yours. You I know. I just, handle. I didn't know. Uh, I didn't know. Eastern I thought thing? it was a first name, and I'm like, Figgin, man. Like, yeah. I I must, if you rocked Figgin in high school, you're. No. It's, it's yeah. plural. It's 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 a very unique Scottish name. You don't see it much. You don't hear. I don't. There was a ball player named Figgins that played for the Angels. Colin oh. Figgins, I want to say, was his name. I can't remember. Bobby Figgins? No, nah, I can't. Now nah, I'm I'm drawing it, a blank on. Is this. that an Eastern thing to add the your mom's maiden name into a middle name? Like I don't know. You I, just said, oh, you got two middle names as well. Might be an Irish thing or something. I think it's thing. just yeah. the mom saying, "Hey, I want a piece of the pie here. Yeah, you exactly. got to get me involved." Yeah. yeah, that would be my assumption. I mean, I don't know. I, I, I'm the only boy. You get two older brothers, so I don't know if they had the same thing. Oh, but for for me, that's what that's my sisters that's only have cool. one middle name. I'm the wow. only one with the two, and it it throws you off. You get the passport done, and then sometimes people will just put William, and I'm like, well, that might be an issue because my passport. Anyway. Yeah, there you go. I know, I know a guy who has seven middle names. Seven literally. middle names. He's a hockey hall of famer. You're kidding me. Yeah. You're being Jerome. serious. There's a guy with seven middle names. Jerome Aginla has, has seven middle names. I think it's let me let me look it up quickly. Like Iggy, his his like full name 
it's it's very unique. I can't wow. remember. Like, well, I know, it, like in in like Spanish culture and Latin American culture, they they will generally have the yeah Sean Figgins. That's what it, Kenny Pagan comes in hot. How oh, nice. Kenny? Yeah, it was right. Sean Figgins spelled C H O N E, Sean Figgins, yeah. but he actually Lefty. spelled it. Uh, Lefty, yeah. kind of like a leadoff guy. Yes, exactly what he was. Yeah, utility type player. He spelled yeah. it F I G G I N S. I spelled E N S. Yeah, here, but there here, you go, Sean Figgins. Yeah, here it is. What a great handle. Jerome Arthur Lee Etikunle Tej Junior Elvis Againla. <laughs> What a name that is. <laughs> is that on his plaque at the Hall of Fame? I, I don't know. I need all seven names on the plaque. It, it's unbelievable. I know his dad's name's Elvis. Obviously, his son, okay. he named Tiege. Right. But I, I don't know the, the you know, reasoning behind it. I just right. know they're, like like I say, it's, I just remember that. Like, I don't know if all of them are on his, they would have to be on his passport or his I birth guess. certificate. I guess. I mean, right? yeah, you know, if you're on the passport, it's got to be a birth certificate for sure. That's great. Yeah. Well, there you go. We learn something new every day. Exactly. Everyone knows my full. Now you know oh, that I have yeah. basically the exact same situation you did. The really? Exact same. So there's there's no go. there's no poking fun because it's not like it's not like you were called Fig. Your name wasn't Figgin no. when you were a kid. Yeah, it's ninety nine percent of the people I know have no idea I have two middle names. Like, no, I just learned that today. That? Actually, I just yeah. learned that a minute ago because I just I saw the text. I had no idea what that was. How would so. you have found that out? Like, what were you <laughs> sniffing around? <laughs> what, you got a private investigator phone. I, I had a document. Jerry come Crumb. Uh, Jerry, Jerry Crumb. Crumb, exactly. <laughs> I just had a document come across my desk with your full name on it, okay. and it said, yeah. right. and I was thinking, like, Higgins from Magnum P.I., and I'm like, yeah, Higgins. No, what the yeah. hell? Figgins, <laughs> it's plural. Yeah, yeah it's Figgins. a Scottish, it's great it's name. A Scottish name. Mom's great got handle. a great last name, and I like there it a lot. The best, right. yep. Okay, hour two coming up. Darren Dreger, confirm or deny, coming up. we got some NFL news, some PGA Championship news. We'll get into that as well. Overdrive continues, TSN 1050 and on TSN 2.